Wellesley's Nikolai Begg is a 25-year-old PhD candidate at the Massachusetts Institute of Technology. Begg was recently announced the winner of the $30,000 Lemelson MIT Prize for his invention aimed at making surgical procedures less invasive. The award is given annually to an MIT senior or graduate student who has created or improved a product or process, redesigned a system, or demonstrated remarkable inventiveness in another area. After years observing doctors and surgeons conduct minimally invasive procedures, Begg invented a puncture access mechanism with a blade that retracts once it passes through skin tissue. This device could drastically improve the safety of many procedures, from epidurals to brain drilling. On this episode of Inside Wellesley, we will meet Mr. Begg, and he will demonstrate his award-winning invention. This is Inside Wellesley. I always love the idea of, of being able to create something new. That's really what I'm passionate about. I've been in love with invention for a long time. My name is Nikolai Begg. I'm a PhD candidate here at MIT uh, studying mechanical engineering, and I'm in my second year. And I'm the 2013 Lemelson MIT Student Prize winner. It's a prize awarded uh, to a graduate student or senior basically for a portfolio of inventiveness. So either improving a process or designing a new device. Um, in my case, I've worked on several medical devices. Uh, over the years, I've been kind of interested in invention. I've always known I wanted to build things. I've always loved playing with Legos, uh, building things, taking them apart, creating new things. Um, what I love about inventing is really that moment where you have an idea and you realize you've done something that either you've never done before or no one's ever done before, and it's this kind of spark. I've watched a bunch of procedures uh, in hospitals around Boston and when I started watching laparoscopic surgeries one of the things that stuck out at me was how um, this gold standard incredibly innovative procedure starts with the surgeon essentially stabbing into the patient with this device called a trocar which is used to create the first incision and doctors train extensively to be able to make sure they don't go too far and plunge into organs or blood vessels but it's actually still the highest, uh, well, the largest cause of complications in, in these types of procedures. And that stuck with me. Puncture access, it's not just laparoscopic surgery, it's in almost every medical procedure. Think of the last time you went to the doctor and you didn't get, you know, stuck with something, right? And there's needles, epidurals, amniocentesis, even, even drilling into the brain to relieve pressure for a traumatic brain injury, that's a puncture access procedure. You know, if you've ever drilled through a wall, you can appreciate that when the drill bit punctures the other side of the wall, you get that kind of plunge through effect where you suddenly have to stop yourself. Well, that happens in surgery all the time. At the second a device punctures tissue, you get this sudden unbalance of force because you're still applying force because your brain hasn't reacted to that change in resistance force, but now the tissue can't apply any force back. If the force of application is too high or the reaction time is too slow, um, the device can go right through into tissue. So the device is essentially a standard puncture device, but it has within it a mechanism that has a retraction spring and this linkage, this flexural linkage. And as long as the tip of the device, the sharp cutting tip, is pressed against tissue and cutting through tissue, the mechanism is locked against the walls with friction. And so that opposes the retraction spring, so it keeps the, uh, the tip exposed and keeps cutting. And as soon as the tip punctures tissue, the force on it goes to zero, the mechanism unlocks, and it retracts the tip. So actually opposing that forward acceleration. Working here, I get to work with a lot of pretty incredible technologies. Some days I'm on my desk, I'll be assembling some tiny devices under a microscope with you know, needles and, and, and super glue. Sometimes I'll be working on the computer, basically trying to design my 
my ideas into more specific dimensions and actually be able to visualize them on the computer, do simulations of, of mechanical stresses and, and see how parts move together using uh, some solid modeling programs. I'll take ballistics gel, which is this material the FBI uses to actually test uh, weaponry because it mimics the mechanical properties of human tissue. Um, but I actually drive uh, needles and other devices into that tissue on a force testing machine so I can get a good estimate of the force it would take for those devices to puncture human tissue. The problem exists in so many different fields of medicine, but you find that not many of them, not many of these fields have spoken to each other and said this is all the same problem. So now it's a question of finding what are the applications I want to use it for and developing prototypes for the specific to those applications. I've gotten a lot of positive reaction from doctors, from engineers saying this is a pretty a simple but effective solution that it really could be applicable because it's not filled with sensors, it doesn't have motors or batteries, and it's not super expensive. So it could be something that really creates an effect all the way through all these different applications. Wellesley Cable Access Station is a nonprofit digital mass media access center serving the town of Wellesley, Massachusetts. We provide education and equipment for members of the Wellesley community that are interested in digital audio video production and distribution. We also coordinate television coverage of local events and oversee two local television channels in Wellesley. In the past months, the Wellesley Cable Access Station has undergone a change. With a new name and a revamped website, the Wellesley Cable Access Station is now the Wellesley Media Corporation. We are now broadcast on two channels, the Wellesley Community Channel and the Government Channel. Our live news shows, Wellesley sports games, events in town, and our original programming are aired on the Wellesley Community Channel. All municipal related meetings are broadcast on our additional Government Channel. With the newly designed website, both of our channels can be accessed online. Whether you want to watch live streaming video from our channels, our award-winning original programming, or catch an event from last week on demand. Our website provides you with access to what you need. The Wellesley Media Corporation has also joined the social media world with a brand new Facebook page and Twitter account. You'll get updates from the channel and have an opportunity to give us feedback as well. Tune in for updates on live event coverage and other programming, classes, and job posting. Wellesley Media Corporation welcomes community involvement. Our set is open to any local resident who would like to produce a show. I mean, it's good training grounds. It's a place you know, to get to know what you learn, what you want to do. And I mean, I, I had no idea what I was doing when I came in here, and I've learned a lot. So I've learned a ton since then. Current programs such as Art Beat, Health Source, and Wellesley Open House are all produced by Wellesley residents. Here at WMC, we welcome new ideas and are here to guide you through the process. We provide the hands-on training and classes so that you can gain the experience you need to produce your own show. What a great resource we've got here in Wellesley. I see kids coming through doing things, I see other adults coming through doing things, and um, it's a very cooperative environment to help people learn how to produce and create video. We also provide internship opportunities and scholarships to those who demonstrate a long-term commitment to the station. The opener. Yeah, the opening, and then we're going to do the okay. kitchen tips, okay. and then the play, right. and then we'll be set. I've been uh, working here for the last four years of my high school experience, and. Uh, yeah, I absolutely uh, love working here and it's a really great place to come and uh, volunteer. If you would like to learn more about the Wellesley Media Corporation, visit us at www.wellseymedia.org or stop by and visit us in person at 37 Walnut Street, Suite 110 in Wellesley. 
You can also friend us at facebook.com forward slash Wellesley Media and follow us on Twitter at Wellesley underscore media.